In this video, we'll create a responsive product card. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If you're just starting or even thinking about starting a career in web development, you're in the right place. I upload new videos every week. Hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. So this is going to be another short video. I'm just going to show you the markup and how this could be created. So I have a new project folder open here and I've created a distribution folder within it as well as an image directory within that with an iPhone 11 image. Okay, so make sure that you're within the distribution folder and we'll create an index.html. We'll create a boilerplate with Emmet. We'll change the title to Apple iPhone 11 Pro. We'll add a link to the CSS file that will be created. In the body, we'll create a main tag with the class of container. And then a div with the class of image box. Within that, we'll have our image. And still within our container, we'll have a, another div with the class of details, and then another div with a class of content, then an H2. This will be the product name, and then a span with the manufacturer name. After the H2, we'll have a paragraph, and we'll just put some lorem. And after that, we'll have an H3 with the price, and then a button, and we'll add the text pre-order now. Okay, so that is it for the HTML markup. Let's save that. And I'm going to open this with live server. And that looks pretty awful. So let's work on our CSS now. So we're actually going to use SAS on this one. So make sure that you are outside of the distribution folder and create a SAS file. We're going to name it style.scss. And if you're unfamiliar with SAS, I have a video on that. I'll put a link in the description below. So we also have the live SAS compiler extension installed. So I'm going to hit watch SAS. So now that's going to compile our CSS every time we hit save. All right, we're going to start by importing a Google font, Montserrat. Then we'll do some global resets, margin zero, padding zero, and box sizing border box. We're going to use Flexbox on a few items uh, to center them. So instead of retyping that several times, I'm going to create a mix in. We'll name it flex center. So that's going to have our display flex, justify content center, and align items center. Let's move on to our body, and we're going to use the flex center on the body. We'll set a minimum height to 100 view height. We'll set our font family to Montserrat, and then a fallback to sans serif. We're going to set the background of the body to an off-white. Right now we'll move on to our container. We're going to display the container as a grid. And if you're unfamiliar with Flexbox and grid, I have videos on those subjects as well. I'll put links in the description below. We're going to take a mobile first approach to this, and so we're going to start out with one column. We're going to set the height to 80 view height with a margin of 50 pixels all around and a background of white. Since we're using SAS, we can nest. So within our container, we have our image box. We're going to include our flex center on this one as well. We'll set a position of relative and a height of 100%. Or we'll have a background with a linear gradient. So at the top will be a light gray and it'll move down to a dark gray. And within our image box, we have our image. We'll set the position of this to absolute with a height of 200%. So we want it to be twice as big as its container. And then we're going to set a drop shadow on the image. Let's save this and see what we have so far. All right, it's getting there. All right, so still within our container, we're going to work on the details. We're going to include the flex center on this one as well, and a padding of 20 pixels. Within the details, we have our H2. We're going to increase the font size on this to 2.5 rem. We're going to set the line height to 0.8 em, and the color to a gray. Within the H2, we have our span, which was the manufacturer name. We want to display this as block so that it goes down underneath the product name. We'll set the font size on this to 0.4 em. Then we'll transform the text to all uppercase, and we'll set a letter spacing of two pixels, and then a color of a lighter gray. All right, still within our details, the next item we have is our paragraph. We're going to set a max width on this of 100%. We'll set a margin bottom of 20 pixels, and then the color to a darker gray. Right, after the paragraph, we have an H3. We'll set the font size of that to 2.5 rem as well, and then the color to the lighter gray. And we're going to float this to the left. And then our last item is our button. We're going to set the background to this blue color and then the text color to white. We'll make sure there's no border, make sure there's no shadow and no outline. We'll set a padding of 15 pixels top and bottom, 20 pixels left and right, an extra margin on the top of five pixels. 
and we'll set the font size to one rem. Set the letter spacing on this to one pixel. And we're gonna transform this to uppercase. A font weight of 600, a border radius of 40 pixels. We're gonna float this one to the right and add a cursor pointer. So I think that's it for the mobile styles. So let's save this and see what we have. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, let's start on our media query. Okay, so we're, we're gonna set a minimum width of 1080 pixels. So anything over that will have these styles. So we'll start with the container. So I want the height of the container to be 600 pixels. Then I wanna change the grid to a two column layout. We'll move on to the image box image. We want the height of that to now be 130%. Then we're going to transform, we're gonna rotate negative 20 degrees and then translate, move it up and to the left 50 pixels. And we're gonna change some of the drop shadow settings. Now still within the container, we have our details. We'll set the height to 100% and the padding to 40 pixels. Then we have our paragraph. We're gonna set a max width of 80%. And we're going to set a margin left of 10%. All right, that's it for the responsive styles. Let's save that. All right, now let's check it out. Expand this a bit. That looks nice. So this is just an example of what you could do. Of course, you'll need to adapt it and change any values to fit your situation and your application. So that's going to be it for this video. So before you go, if you liked this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. I upload new content every week, so hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. And if you think this video or any of the videos on my channel might be helpful to someone else, please share them. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at CodeStacker. Thanks for watching.